Okay, so um, as I said, that was a, an offer I couldn't refuse and I left everything behind me in France. Uh, bear in mind I had gone to France from the Netherlands, so this was my third language and my third country when I came here. And it was quite overwhelming, I can tell you, in spite of having worked in psychiatry for five years by then and having all those qualifications, to live in a therapeutic community with people who had given up using medication and who wanted to do things just by living there and talking whenever they wanted to, not, you know, 50 minutes here and 50 minutes there. No, this was the place I lived for a year and they had access to me 24 seven, which of course in practice meant knocks on your door at two o'clock in the morning. I'm suicidal, can I come in and sitting on your bed? This teaches you to think about psychotherapy in quite a different way. And for me, the philosophical side of that became more and more important. And at the end of that year, after a long trip through California, staying in Esalen and other places where uh, experimental things were being done in psychiatry and psychotherapy, I started teaching the way I had learned for myself to work with these people and how I could use both the philosophical ideas and the psychological ideas to pull that together, to stand with people when they are at the depth of their suffering. So that is what this is about, to engage with the other person at quite a deep level, at quite a real level, and to really consider together with them what it is that is stopping them in their tracks and what it is that has made life unlivable to them. Because most of the time that is how bad it is for people when they come and consult you. So one of the things I realized is that people lose a sense of meaning. They lose track of the idea oh, of what life is for. They forget that they need to live life as we make a fire. They forget that if life doesn't offer us meanings that set us on fire automatically, then we need to learn to set fire to ourselves. And I do not mean that in the literal sense, <laughs> because I can assure you I've been at the receiving end of those kinds of things too. You know, people have done all sorts of things over the years in the therapeutic community or in the psychiatric places I have worked. But fortunately, I am now working in a more cultivated environment where people know these things are not acceptable. So setting yourself on fire is about finding your passion back. It is finding out what it is you want to live for. And what I discovered is that always and always when people come to see me as a psychotherapist, it is because they've gotten out of touch with themselves. They've lost that inner fire. They've lost their passion. They've lost their sense of direction and purpose and meaning. All of that has become unraveled. They're out of touch with the very things that are good and beautiful and true in the world and in ourselves. So that is what existential therapy is about. It is about enabling people to get some perspective, to come out of the tunnel, not just to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but to actually move out of the tunnel, to get back into that physical movement, that mental movement, that emotional movement, that spiritual movement that gives them a sense of, yeah, here we go, I know where I'm going, and I can see that I can navigate my life again. So that is the objective of existential therapy. It is about making sense of the world, 
but particularly about making sense of the way in which we make meaning in life. So there is quite a difference between making sense of something and making meaning of something. And the way in which I view that is that meanings are always complex and they're always multi-layered. As a philosopher, I have entirely rejected the opposition between dualism and monism. I believe everything is layered and multi-layered and diverse. It isn't binary, it's never binary, but it's always complex. So I'm not interested in materialism or idealism. All of it is true in some way. Our challenge is to fit all of that together and to understand how we create a pattern of meaning that we can thrive on and enjoy living with. 